Like and subscribe now, or you're gonna have bad luck this week. Approximately 600 million people watched with excitement as Neil A. Armstrong and Edward E. Buzz Aldrin Jr. took their first steps on the moon on July 20th, 1969. These two men made history as they became the first humans ever to walk on the moon. While there was much excitement and happiness over this historic feat, it wasn't all smooth sailing as it seems. There is a lot that is not exciting. Here are 10 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Number one will definitely throw you off your seat. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to get more videos like this. Number 10, Apollo 11 landed in the wrong place. After the Apollo lunar module, which was also called the Eagle, missed its intended landing site and moved towards a crater full of boulders, Armstrong had to take manual control of the Eagle and flew it like a helicopter, even farther from the landing site to a smoother area without so many rocks. He eventually landed on the moon, four miles from the original landing site, with less than a minute of descent fuel remaining. To further show off his skills as a pilot, Armstrong landed the Eagle too softly on the surface of the moon. NASA scientists built the lander with legs that could crumple upon impact to absorb the shock. So Armstrong was supposed to cut the engines when the lander was a few feet above the surface. But being an excellent pilot, the lander's legs did not crumple. As a result, the astronauts had to exit the ladder several feet higher than intended. Which means that the first small steps were more of a leap. Number 9. Apollo 11 was low on fuel when it landed. When the Apollo 11 landed, the fuel supply was extremely low. The alarm had already notified them they only had 60 seconds left to land or abort. Then, the 30 second alarm sounded. Speaking about the experience, Aldrin said, When it got down to 30 seconds, we were about 10 feet or less from the surface. I could sneak a lookout because at that point I didn't think Neil cared what the numbers were. He was looking at the outside. I could see the shadow of the sun behind us. A few seconds later, Armstrong confirmed to Houston, the Eagle has landed. Interestingly, during a routine interview with the press on July 5, 1959, when asked about whether he'd be taking any personal mementos to the moon with him, Aldrin responded, if I had a choice, I would take more fuel. Number 8. Famous misquote or not. When Neil Armstrong made his first step onto the moon's surface, he had prepared a line, and it sounded like he messed it up. He said one small step for man, but he was supposed to say one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. He later insisted that A simply didn't get heard. In a 2006 biography, he noted, I think that reasonable people will realize that I didn't intentionally make an inane statement and that certainly the A was intended, because that's the only way the statement makes any sense. A computer programmer used software to analyze Armstrong's word and found that the A was indeed there. It's possible that it was not heard because of radio static. Number seven, first word spoken on the moon. Contrary to popular reports that Armstrong uttered the first words on the moon, mission transcripts suggest that Aldrin actually said the first words on the moon. In an interview with KHOU 11 News, Aldrin said, It's a technicality, but if you want the first words on the moon, they were contact light. He spoke those words the instant he saw an instrument panel light that illuminated his probes extended from the lunar module footpads touched the moon's surface. His next words were telling, Okay, engine stop. Once the engines had shut down, it's obvious the lunar module was sitting on the moon. Aldrin rattled off some more technical mumbo jumbo. Then, after a moment of silence, Mission Control basically asked the question, We copy you, Down Eagle, said Charlie Duke, the capsule communicator in Houston, which was another way of saying, Looks like you guys have landed. Only then did Armstrong transmit the announcement, beginning with the word Houston. Number 6. Aldrin took the first soggy step. We are all aware that Armstrong was the first human to set foot on the moon. Aldrin, however, holds the title as the first man to urinate on it. When he stepped out of the Eagle onto the moon, Aldrin emptied his bladder into his spacesuit's internal urine collector. Unfortunately, due to the higher than expected leap from the Eagle, his urine collector had already broken thanks to Armstrong's ace piloting skills. One of Aldrin's boots ended up getting filled with pee as he relieved himself. He kept it to himself at the time, as he was on a live radio feed. Aldrin looked back with a sense of wonder 
and some regret that the lunar expedition... Number 5. The first food eaten on the moon was a communion wafer. A few minutes after Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, Aldrin radioed back to Earth and said, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask every person listening in, whoever or wherever they may be, to pause for a moment and contemplate the events of the past few hours, and to give thanks in his or her own way. In this time, Aldrin, an elder in the local Presbyterian church, had a little communion ceremony of his own, reading scripture and taking the sacrament. Speaking about the experience later, Aldrin said, I ate the tiny host and swallowed the wine. I gave thanks for the intelligence and spirit that had brought two young pilots to the Sea of Tranquility. It was interesting for me to think, the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the very first food eaten there were the communion elements. Number 4. Autographs were the astronauts' version of life insurance. In a bit to ensure that their families were not stranded financially if the mission was unsuccessful, the Apollo 11 crew signed autographs which were to be auctioned off if needed. They signed hundreds of envelopes and postcards, then had friends postmark them July 16th or July 20th, the launch or moon landing date. They figured that the autographs would be valuable enough to provide for their families if the men didn't return. Space historian Robert Perlman told NPR that Apollo 11 insurance autographs had began popping up in space memorabilia auctions in the 1990s, where they could fetch $30,000 apiece. Number 3. The Apollo 11 crew were quarantined for more than two weeks for fear of moon plague. The Apollo 11 crew re-entered Earth's atmosphere. It landed in the Pacific Ocean on July 24, 1969. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins were immediately placed into the mobile quarantine aboard the USS Hornet aircraft carrier before they were transported to Pearl Harbor. This was to ensure that the men had not brought back any sort of weird moon disease and also to protect the Earth from possible lunar germs. Even though NASA scientists doubted the possibility of any life form on the moon, they were released from quarantine on August 10, 1969. During their time in quarantine, President Richard Nixon did a photo op with the crew as they pressed their faces against the glass of their sealed room. Number 2. A felt-tipped pen saved the mission. In the lunar module's close confines, Armstrong's backpack smashed against the ascent engine's arming switch. Now, this was the switch needed to start the engine and begin the flight back to Earth. But now it had broken off. Were they going to be stuck on the moon? All hope was lost as there was no fix or clear solution for an occurrence like this. Fortunately, Aldrin had a flash of ingenuity. He wrote about how some quick thinking helped solve the problem in his 2009 memoir, Magnificent Destination, The Long Journey Home from the Moon. Since it was electrical, I decided not to put my finger in it or use anything that had metal on the end. I had a felt-tipped pen in the shoulder pocket of my suit that might do the job. After moving the countdown procedure up by a couple of hours in case it didn't work, I inserted the pen into the small opening where the circuit breaker switch should have been and pushed it in. Sure enough, the circuit breaker held. We were going to get off the moon after all. Number one, in the event of a moon disaster, while the world celebrated the first men on the moon, President Nixon wasn't so excited as anxiety got the better of him. If anything went wrong, how would he manage America's outrage over billions of tax dollars culminating in the death of two astronauts? Two days before the moon landing, Nixon's speechwriter William Safire had written two speeches for the president, one to celebrate the mission's victory and the other titled In the Event of Moon Disaster. It started. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. Watching Apollo 11 live from the moon, the president could only hope he wouldn't have to read it. His prayers were answered as the men who had traveled more than 200,000 miles to the moon and then stepped foot on an alien world had survived. And the United States would complete six crewed missions that landed a total of 12 astronauts on the moon from 1969 to 1972. And there you have it, 10 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments below. To get more content like this, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye!